This is WPSL Port St. Lucie. The views expressed on this program does not necessarily reflect those of WPSL. However, I'll also say that well, they darn sure don't reflect the everyday average run-of-the-mill uh, right-wing Republican uh, side of the story, which is what you get most of the time around here. However, tonight's show, this show, the African-American scene, is designed to help educate you over what's been going on all along. And it's always exciting to introduce to you, from Howard Insurance in Port St. Lucie, your host, Rudy Howard. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Always glad to be with you here on a Wednesday night. My, 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 it, it's, it's like uh, I, can, I can hardly do any preparation because there's always so much stuff going on that it gives me everything to talk about for the, for the next show. Uh, I, 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 uh, I don't think we talked about it last week. If we did, then you correct me, but... The census information came out, and I have frequently talked on here about the Browning of America and how uh, people were uh, a little afraid of that. Well, uh, not only did the census point in that direction, it's happening faster than everybody thought. And this past week, I listened to several Hispanic professors who feel there was a severe undercount because of what Trump had said about citizenship questions on the census. There were people that should have been counted that did not get counted. So, but nevertheless, but you know, listen, maybe, just maybe, it will make us all more cognizant about trying to work together. That's, that's very hopeful thinking. And as my wife would say, Rudy, you're being a little naive, but I tend to be, as a 60s child, I still tend to be a little Pollyannish sometime. <laughs> do, you, do you still uh, like put on round sunglasses and <laughs> wear bell bottoms and things no, like that? No, I don't. <laughs> But I still have that. Uh, I still have those. Some of those beliefs. I. I still have. But anyway. Afghanistan. Ooh. What's your thoughts about Afghanistan? Ooh, you don't. Oh, oh, don't yeah. get me started on that. Is, yeah. is one, I, I only find one slight, little mishap in all of this here. Now, my the, the military people that I know. I don't. I don't see them want to leave without getting all the civilian Americans out first. That should have been like a last mission, but they booked it on out of there. And all those civilians are still there doing their uh, civilian jobs. And they can't go to the airport. That's tough. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I have some concerns about that, but, but my concern is this. I saw we've spent $2.26 trillion training and equipping the Afghanistan forces to be able to defend themselves and protect their country. And when they were under pressure, some of them just dropped their arms, took their uniforms off, and uh, tried to blend into the crowd. Now, war is an ugly, nasty thing, and uh, it's a lot easier for me to sit here and say what I would or wouldn't do since I'm not the one facing it. But I, 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 one thing I am certain of right now as I sit here, my old butt would fight like hell if somebody tried to take over this country. Right now, at my age, 
If somebody was trying to take over my country, I'd fight like hell. There's no doubt in my mind about that. I would definitely fight. If it cost me my life, it cost me my life. But that's how I feel about because this country uh, holds my grandchildren and, and my son. And they were fighting for it for me. Okay. I, I, With whatever fight we got in us still, right? That's right. <laughs> and I got a whole lot of it's gone out of me, but I, I got to say, I certainly, I certainly would, would. I think we have a reserve level where it comes if we need it. You know, I think so. I, I, oh, especially with my grandbabies. Oh my, boy, that that would be. I I could I'd lose my mind if somebody tried to hurt them. <laughs> uh, but in any event, so I, I I'm interested in what your thinks thinking is about Afghanistan. You know, it's on the it's on the air all day every day. People are talking about it. And I certainly would like to see what your opinion about it is. 3401590. That's 3401590. Now, let me tell you, uh, I want to give you some insight on, on something. Uh, you know, it's, we've had so much discussions about COVID. I'm not sure everybody truly understands what the COVID is all about. And some people say that they came up with a solution much too fast, which is why they feel it's not trustworthy. Well, it really wasn't fast because they had been working on an RNA vaccine for many, many years. And it just so happens that in order to create a vaccine to fight COVID, they were able to use that research and that prior scientific knowledge to create the COVID vaccine. Now, what exactly is it? It's an infection that goes in and attaches to your cells. And once it attaches to a cell in the body, it is it begins to duplicate. And so it, once it's in there and it's attached to some of your cells, it begins to multiply, to, which is why it can be so deadly and make you feel so sick. So what does the vaccine do? And, and I'm taking scientific terms, and I'm just trying to make this as simple as I can for you so you can understand it. The vaccine is like bringing in the armed militia okay you have Calling provided the national guard yes <laughs> what you've done is you have provided your immunization system your white blood cell count with with equipment and hand grenades and shields to go out and fight that substance that is attached to your cells. And that's what that's what COVID does. It goes out and it fights that uh, infection. It gives your immune system basic training. Yes, it does. <laughs> yes, it does. So if you didn't understand, I think I, I, I've oversimplified it, but I, I was trying to find a way. I, I had done the reading. And there's some fancy uh, scientific terms in there. And I thought that that wouldn't be of any benefit to any of you for me to go through and give you all those fancy scientific terms. You don't send us screaming for our dictionaries. Right. <laughs> so I, I tried to put it in a way that makes it universally understandable. So why would you now see now let me expand on that. Why would you not want to give your white blood cells some equipment to fight? Why wouldn't you want to do that? I don't I don't I don't get it. So if if you don't give your white blood cells some additional armament, you're just rolling the dice that the uh 
the uh, infection never comes to you. Why would you want to take that chance? I I don't know. I don't get it. I it, it seems to me that it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for you to take take a chance about that. You know, if you have the ability to try to defeat it, why not do it? And we have Daniel. Yes, Daniel. Hey, Rudy, I, I'd like to get back to the Afghanistan, you know, uh, and how you were so pro-Biden and against Trump. Yes. Do you think we would have had a better chance of evacuating these people? Close to 40,000 Americans and people that helped us in this war. Do you think we'd have had a better chance with Trump than Biden? No. He, he's, he's, I, I, I do believe we would have because people were afraid of Trump. They knew that he didn't take any kind of crap. And, and Joe Biden is a weak, weak president. I have to tell you. Whoa. Weak. And, and he's, not, he's not all there. And you know that, Rudy. I hope you know that. Well, well, tell, tell me how, tell me why you say he's not all there. He can't hardly even read the teleprompter that's in front of him. And he, he's not running this country. You don't think he's you running? Know, all he's doing is reading what other people are writing for him. Uh-huh. He's been in hiding now. He don't. He won't even address the, the fact that almost forty thousand people are over there and need to get out, and the Taliban has got them. Well, it, it, it's a sad, sad situation, and it's going to get a whole lot worse. Believe me. Well, I got to tell you, Daniel. I know you're a Trumper, but he was the most vile, despicable, crass, ridiculous human being that has ever sat in the White House. And it's Nothing only a matter of time it's only a matter of time before the historians rank him and they already have started to rank him as one of the worst presidents in the history no, of the no, United no, no, States. No, no, no. I, I find that totally wrong. Look it up! He's going to make America strong. Now we're, we're, we're looking weak. We're getting laughed at by the rest of the world, Rudy. And, and I know you see it. If you watch every station now, not only the uh, the Fox News and, and, and the other Republican type of uh, broadcasting, CNN, ABC, NBC. Daniel, the, the leaders, uh, the other leaders in the world were laughing at us. The right news. The, 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 the leaders of the world were laughing at us when Trump was in office. No, no. Our enemies are laughing at us now, Rudy. It, it, it's, it's, not, it's not good. China's saying, oh, man, what a pushover Biden is. I don't he, think he, it... is a, he is the weakest president. He's worse than Jimmy Carter. Worse. And Jimmy Carter was considered the worst. No, he wasn't. Yes, yes, he was. No, he Believe wasn't. Me. You read, Look, your, read we had your, high inflation back then. We had high read, gas prices. Read your, I, I read, know, read your I history. Get, get ourselves out of this. Read your history. James Buchanan was largely considered the worst president in history, oh, and, well, and, I, and I, recently, and recently, the historians have now ranked Trump as close to the worst president in the history of the United States. Trump kept us safe. And Biden is going to get us in big, big trouble. Okay, well, we'll see about that. If Biden is not in control, huh? if Biden's not in control, then how come we're blaming him on uh, pulling all the military out of uh, Well, Afghanistan? Listen, you, you know, first, first off, I guess Daniel likes the flamboyant uh, type of uh, attitude of Trump which I find deeply offensive. But we got Steve on line one. Yes, Steve. How you doing, Rudy? Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, in Afghanistan, the president sums it up when he said, listen, if they're not willing to fight for their freedom, we're not going to have any Americans die for it. Yes, sir. So, you know, that, that Trumpster, that's a, that's a Trumpster. 
Trump supporter in a dumpster. We call them Trumpsters. Uh, he don't get it. Uh, Trump in 2020, uh, in his peace deal with the Taliban, made Pakistan release the number one Taliban leader, letting go plus 5,000 prisoners they had. That yes, he did. Yes, he did. That's a fact. And the, it the is. Trumpsters ought to look that up. Because what did those guys do? They went right back into the battleground, and that leader is the one that led them into Kabul. Yes, he did. So that's enough on that. On the virus, I just got my booster. Listen, anybody that does has not got a shot right now is just the walking dead. So, it, you know, if you're, it's a good way to rid the, the strain of stupidity. <laughs> you're going to die off. Yeah, I'm what, serious. Unfortunately, he's right. If you're, if you're that stupid, I don't want your DNA mixed up in you know my uh, country. Yeah, but uh, it, it, uh, this is no joke. Uh, this this virus doesn't care if you're an R or a D. That just means real dead. Oh. Uh, for for so, sure. You know, I, listen, I, you and I are both up have been around a long time. I cannot. I, I I am just absolutely aghast at how a medical situation has become a political football. I, well, I, I turned I turned seventy two today. I asked myself the same question. I said, in grade school, we lined up for polio, measles, yep, and everything. Yep, yep. No questions asked. And now all of a sudden, it's uh, uh, instead of discipline, I'm going to count. And instead of a vaccine, I'm going to hope. This is nuts. It is. You know, <laughs> just a, and, and our governor, the, the governor super spreader, or as we like to call him, Ron D. Stupid, uh, he's unbelievably dumb. But did you see where the governor, I think it was Louisiana, that had the same type of thinking, got COVID? Yep. And oh, while the governor no. of Texas got it too. Yeah. This guy had been vaccinated. Yeah. And he he got it. So it that this, this virus is changing hourly. Yes. It, you know, it's a, a virus changes to stay alive. So whatever it's got to do, it's just it's a what do they call them shape shifter. Yep. Uh, it's going to do. And people better understand that and get it now because you're not gonna survive. They had. You're talking about kids now, nine years old, ten years old, dying in four and five days after they get it. This is crazy. It is. So, but uh, anyway, on Afghanistan, we did the right thing. Uh, it, it, we got to stop being the policemen of the world. That's what ruined Russia's economy. That's what ruined everybody's economy. You know, and, knock it off. But the other thing is, you're not willing to fight for your country, then I'm not willing to go fight for you. Um, the, amen. Amen. You know? <clears throat> I don't know when we're going to get it. We we try to uh, go into countries and try to create a democracy in a place that's been around 2,000 years longer than us. But we want to go in and tell them what is the best way to be? That's just yeah. arrogance. That's arrogance. The other thing is our stupidity. Uh, in our schools, we don't teach the crusade. Now, wasn't that just the reverse? The Christians going in and imposing Christianity on the Muslims? Yes. Yes, it was. And so what do we have today? We have a modern-day, uh, you know, purge of uh, non-Muslim people over there. They're having their own, uh, whatever you want to call it, crusade. But we're right to be out of there. We don't need to be there. And yes. given Saudi Arabia money, when 15 of the 19 hijackers were Saudi Arabia, is nuts. Oh, that was crazy, yes. Yes. So, so I got to go. Cause okay. It's my birthday, and I decided I wouldn't get upset. Okay, well, Steve. Thanks, happy, Steve. Happy birthday, my friend. Thank you. Okay. You take care. All righty. You wow. too.
He was one of the big kids back when when I got my polio drink. That was <laughs> 1964. I was in first grade, Rudy. Yeah. And and he just turned 73, so uh, so he's he's 10 years older than I am. Now, did they give the big kids the polio shots too? I remember that needle that they scratched our arm with. I think I think gave we us had the uh, scar. I think we got the sugar cube. Yeah, the, yeah, I've heard of those too. We did yeah. the water, which was kind of sweet. It yeah, was, we had. Uh, I think, I think we got ours with the sugar cube, if my memory serves me correctly. I but I do remember getting all kinds of shots, and you had to show a shot record before you went to school. Yeah, and as a, when you're raising your kids, that's what happens too. Yeah, you got to have their shot records, and and I remember we had to bring the kids uh, around to get their shots, and the more the kids there are, the more shots. <laughs> Everybody has to have them for just to get in school. Of course, then there's another one at around age 13 or 14 or so. But uh, and now there's this one. Now we've got the COVID thing. It's just like all of the other vaccines that we've dealt with before, and uh, we all seem to be okay. I mean, there's always side effects, and uh, sometimes they're they're rather nasty, but they're not that many of them per million or per thousand. Let, let, and, and let me say something else about what Daniel said about Trump. I think Trump was a lily-livered, big chicken, and a big blow all, big blowhard uh, with no back, zero back. He whined and cried like a little baby when he got beat. I have never seen a grown man act so disgusting I would have taken my son to the woodshed for acting like that after losing a game. I would have. You want something to cry for? Yeah, I'm going to give you something <laughs> to cry for. You act like that and you, you, you tell me that that's somebody that you should look up to to lead our country? Uh, thank you but no thank you. He is an absolute loser. And time will tell you what a loser he is. And he tried to overthrow our democracy, and he was not successful, but he tried. And just for that alone, just that, I won't even talk about any of the other stuff, just the fact that he tried to overthrow our democracy, how could you possibly have any allegiance to that man? How could you possibly? The man is, and, and he whined like a little baby. And he constantly said, well, how come you won't give me credit? How come you won't give me a pat on the back? Oh, grow up. OK, uh, don't get me going on that. <laughs> I, got all, I got all excited about but that. It looked like a. A heavy load lifted from you. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, the guy just makes me so. I, I, I keep reading stuff, and the more stuff I read about the things that he did, and see guys like Daniel, they're never going to pick up and read the stuff that they need to read so that he can really understand what a, a terrible human being his hero is. He just won't read that stuff. He will consider all the information that exists propaganda just designed to tear him down instead of reading it to try to gain some insight and understanding. So, and we got Winnie. Winnie, how are you? How are you doing, my friend? Okay. Good, good, good. How are you doing? I bet you brainwashed and, uh, I won't be voting him never again. Uh, Trump, Trump, too. Oh, yeah. You know, I yeah. I yeah. He's one of the worst presidents that we ever had. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, he is. Yeah. And by the country, to get liars. Uh, like something's wrong. We have upstairs. Something's wrong. But I hear you. I think you're going to try to run 2024. I wouldn't yeah, be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised, and I will not be surprised if there's a whole bunch of people that try to support him, too. 
Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Bye bye. We got Paul on line three. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, I didn't know you had a number. Uh, I guess it's me. Yes. Uh, That's for that was for Rudy to know. Yeah. Just wondering if you checked out uh, rumors of war. Rumors. I was telling you about a couple of weeks ago. Rumors of war. Wars and rumors. There's always. What's always that? Is that a book? No, no, no. It's the statue in Virginia, in Richmond, the oh. latest statue. Oh, yeah. And you said that was a statue of. That's the name of the statue. If you if you just look up, if put that in uh, Google. It'll pull it up. The statue. Okay. Okay. Wars and rumors of war. Rumors of war. Plagiarized by the from the Bible. I think. Yeah. Rumors of war. Okay. I'll. Okay, so what would I learn from looking at at the statue? Well, it's a young black man wearing sneakers and I guess you call them corn rolls or whatever kind of <laughs> hairdo. Uh huh. It, it, the statue used to have on Monument Avenue. That's why I brought it up. And I'm very familiar with Monument Avenue. I don't know if it's on Monument Avenue, but it is in Richmond, Virginia. Okay. Rumors, rumors of war. Okay. Check it out. All right, I will. Okay. All right, thank you. All right. Okay. There have always been rumors of war, though. <laughs> yeah. Because every every generation for the last two thousand or so years has believed that it was the end of the world because there were always wars and rumors of wars and there's, there's always been like that so so with, with that it would it would tend to cause people to well to, to maybe believe it and use that phrase yeah phrase <laughs> listen uh one of the things that uh i i looked at this past week is the information about the new census and uh, they've talked about it on most of the news channels. And um, like I said earlier, one of the things I learned this week is that the uh, they think there was a significant undercount of some of the Hispanic population. But what's interesting is the decline of the white majority and uh, so this further supports the desperation for why the need to have all of this voter suppression laws in place, um, which is really, really a, a sad situation. Because I really feel, and I've said this, and if you've been listening to me for a while, I've probably said it so much you're probably sick and tired of hearing me say it. But you could win black votes. Conservatives could very easily win black votes. They wouldn't do stupid stuff. Because black people tend to be a lot more conservative than you think. But you do stupid stuff and then you turn off those that might be leaning in your direction and would might consider some of the ideas that you have, you do stupid stuff and now you have no ideas. You've just absolutely abandoned all ideas and your only method now is division, 
and and uh, creating false narratives about things to upset people about. That's a that's a losing that's a losing thing, because most most of the reasonably intelligent people I know, especially the intelligent white people I know, they won't accept that. They're not going to accept it. They're not going to get out and protest, most of them, but they're just not going to accept the crap you're putting on them. This critical race theory thing, uh, all of that stuff. They're, they're, look, they're rolling their eyes and going, oh, you got to be kidding me. I, I took a peek over your shoulder er, earlier, and I was looking at the, the factual research that you were looking at. And... Uh, and, and I saw something that reminded me of an old 60s song, Where Have All the Flowers Gone? And it said, <laughs> Where Have All the White Folks Gone? Yeah. And, and is that from the, the results of a census? Yes. Yes, it is. They, so they we're, have, a, yeah. we're minorities now. Yeah. Ooh. They're not yet, but you're getting close. You're, you're getting close. Okay, but okay. What, what's happened, though, is that there is, in some areas, a significant drop-off of the uh, white population. Uh, now in, in uh, let's see, Georgia and Louisiana are states that have about a third of a black population. And what they're saying is as you, as we continue to develop as a country, we're becoming more and more diverse. And uh, some areas are almost exclusively white. For example, Montana has 0.5% brown people. Idaho, 0.9%. Wyoming, 0.9%. Those are the three states where there's less than 1% of black folks, uh, which is kind of interesting. So the bigger, the, the, the larger cities, uh, the uh, inner cities, are, are the, the more the black folks are compacted into those population areas? Yes, yes, but they're starting to lose some of the black folks from those areas too. Uh, let me see here. Let me see if I can get that my fin- fingers on uh, where some of the okay black population decline. There was a six point three percent decline of the black people in uh, Washington D.C. and there was a decline by five point five percent of black people in Alaska, Illinois 3.3%, uh, California 2.1%, Michigan 1.8%, Mississippi 1.3%, New York 0.9%, and South Carolina 0.9%. So those are the areas where there was a decline in uh, black folks. Now the increase is in brown folks that decreases the the white folks population. Yes, yes. So see, when Rudy was saying those low numbers uh, of black folks, he wasn't talking about the brown folks, the 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 dark skin, the melting pot that, that we've become as America. And I understood that when I was a kid when they explained that melting pot well, thing. Well, that was what. I was raised to believe. Yeah. The, what, what I was raised to believe is we are becoming what I thought we were always intended to be, yeah. which was a melting pot. Yeah. But imagine now the kids are getting these awesome educations from yeah. colleges all over the country, and they're emerging with the new America, the, the future. You look at your grandchildren, you're looking right at the future, right there, you in person. You can touch them. They're the future. Well, and, and, and listen, if you 
don't, unless you're just uh, living under a rock, if you turn on the evening news and uh, or a TV show in the evening, there is so many multiracial commercials now that I never saw as a kid. As oh, a kid. yeah. You, you think know, think about that. I That's, started seeing that as a child. Do you remember when, uh, well, Sesame Street, not so much, but the next one that came after it, the electric company. Yes. They had all kinds of races of kids all singing songs together and all being a part yes. of an educational show. Right, right. The electric company. And Morgan Freeman we used to be on the electric company. That's right. You know, I used to watch him there. And, uh, and, and you know, what's amazing today is you... you you uh, take a stroll th- on any college campus, you'll see the same thing. You go to Disney World, what are you going to see? People from all over the world come to Disney World. And uh, and I hear such bad stuff about China. I saw a lot of people from China at Disney World. If, if it's so bad to be where they're at over there in China, how can they come over here and visit Disney World then if it's yeah. so bad over there? Yeah. You know, it's, you, you got to... You know, we're we're fed whatever's on the menu of where we're eating. You know, we might not like the the restaurant across the street, so we just eat here. You know? <laughs> imagine, imagine the peace that could break out on the earth if everybody shared a meal with each other to stop by, have a barbecue. Yeah. You know, that's I, I think that's the greatest thing to do right there. We've talked about that how many times on the show. I had a I had a that neighbor people. that he he told me. He was going to make snook head soup, and I never heard of that. Never heard of it. But when I tried it, I couldn't believe how good it was. Yeah. Like, wow. You know? So that soul food means something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. But but in, in any event, one, one of the things that we're, we're looking at here, these populations, uh, the black population percentage by state, Obviously, the largest is uh, Washington, D.C. And guess what the second largest black population in the state is? Second largest? Yeah. What's that? Mississippi. Mississippi? Yeah. That's the second largest black population of people How about is in Mississippi. W- what, what's the first? Is that Alabama? D- oh. D.C. D.C.? Wow. And then and then uh Georgia. Okay. Uh then Louisiana. Then Maryland. Uh then Alabama. Can you imagine that? Alabama's Alabama's way down the list. Way down there. Yeah, wow. Alabama. Uh South uh Carolina. Delaware. North Carolina. Uh, Virginia and Florida rounds out. All right, Florida. Well, Florida. Florida would always. I knew what Florida would well, always. Well, you know, around. Florida is a little weird because, like, take Port. I don't know if I told you about this, but they did an article on me in the Christian Science Monitor. The guy that did the article, he looked me up because two of the most. Uh, mixed race cities in the United States. One was in Colorado, Colorado Springs, Colorado, and the second was Port St. Lucie. Whoa. Yeah. Hey. The two most uh, diverse cities in the United States, Colorado Springs, Colorado, and Port St. Lucie. So, Is that why some of the callers of this show are a little angry at times? <laughs> <laughs> What, but anyway, he, he interviewed me, and uh, they did a nice little write-up in the Christian Science Monitor. Uh, and some of my friends have read, read the article. Uh, but but I think what, what's interesting is that Florida is a little different because Florida tends not to be, at least, in, well, in our area for sure, but... In a lot, lot part of Fort Florida, they don't have as much ethnic neighborhoods as they do up north. Up north, there's a lot of ethnic neighborhoods, like in New York City, 
In Philadelphia, South Philly is the Italians. West Philly is the black folks. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's that's uh, very much. And but but when you come here in Florida, Florida doesn't have as much of that. There's some uh, ethnic areas in Miami, but outside of that, Florida's pretty diverse overall. Wouldn't you say? Well, yeah, and people. People see uh, they appear to get along better here because we're in Florida. They're all happy <laughs> because we all came from where up north where it's cold. Yeah, <laughs> real uh, cold. So I don't know. But anyway, so they, they did that article on me and it's in the Christian Science Monitor. So but mm. so what we're finding now with this, uh, I want to make a unhealthy prediction. I think this information as it continues to play out is going to raise the ire of the three percenters the oak boys and uh they're all going to get really angry about the idea that they will no longer be king of the hill and king of the hill is not a given I know, but that's, <laughs> listen, and I, I'm not naive. I, I totally get it. If you're at the king, if you've been king of the hill forever and somebody's coming along and trying to knock you off the top of that mountain. Defeat. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's not, that's not going to make you feel very good, you know. But you can, you can make that not be a problem if you share the top of the mountain. Hey, rather than there's look, enough room up here for all of us. Right. Rather than be concerned about getting knocked off the top, how about you invite somebody to the mountain and, and, help them up. and share the top of the mountain with them? Then nobody lost. Yeah. You know? That's the problem, though. People who have been king of the mountain for too long, they can't let go. No. You know? No. It's like an addiction. No. Yeah, you're right. I, I it's gonna be listen, I I Oath Keepers and Proud Boys and they're all gonna they're gonna use this information from this census to recruit more people to come into their organizations. It's gonna happen. Because people don't want to necessarily want to share the power which is what the votes all about and, and listen as you can see and I've said this about a zillion times too uh, Obama never won the majority of the white vote not one time he won with the support of some whites but the solid voter turnout of blacks, Asians, and Hispanics that went into his column. And, and that's not uh, the Cubans either. I'm talking about the Puerto Rican Spanish, not the Cuban Spanish. Uh, although I, I do think there's been some modification by Cubans regarding uh, how they view the Democratic Party versus the Republican Party. Because the, re the Cubans largely supported the Republicans because they were very much against socialism because of what Castro did to the Cuban island. But uh, I think some of the Cubans, the younger ones now, see things a little bit differently. I know my very good friend Ray Artiaga, he, he he was the one that really pulled my coattails so that I could understand how Cubans were feeling about uh, socialism. And after listening to him talk and tell me how that affected him, I I understood. But but let, let me just say that whatever we gonna do. Our current economic system is broke. It's broke. 
Some of us are waiting on the sidelines because well, there's there's new stuff coming. There's there's artificial intelligence. And and you, you think you have a problem with your neighbor? What what if you had had an AI robot that uh, sort of got out uh, pro over programmed or overly programmed, which is probably possible. And uh, they're getting smarter and smarter. They're making these AI robots to make other AI robots to do everything. Well, here's the here's the thing. I think that we've seen happen for the first time since Reagan. People have started to take back some power when it comes to employment. They are just not willing to do anything to scratch out a living. Ah. And they're making demands of employers to pay a little more money. Yeah, well, they, they talk about minimum wage getting up to $15 an hour. Yeah. You know what? I, I talked to a, a gentleman that I worked for here, in this right in here in this building, years and years ago. And he told me, he said, you know, the problem is, is there are actually some jobs out there that aren't worth paying minimum wage for. And I said, what? I could, how could I imagine that? Because... You know, there, there there appears to be so much money by the people that run businesses and hire people to work for them. And uh, but he, he said there are some jobs out there, and it was the minimum wage is much lower back then. This was the the eighties, early eighties. And uh, he said there are some jobs out there that that aren't worth minimum wage because you got to be able to make that money back out of the work that's been uh, generated. It's supposed to generate money for the company, and. Uh, well, I got over it. <laughs> Not much over it, but barely over it is over it. So we're yeah. good. <laughs> well, you know, but what, what, what's, what's happened, though, is people have also discovered they want more out of life than going to work every day and just grinding it out to yeah, try to make yeah. enough money to get by. Uh, that's... Uh, that's not real attractive anymore. And and so employers have to pay. And you know what? If I go to the restaurant and and uh, there's a guy I used to have a lot of debates on, on the Internet with who might be listening, and he used to say, well, they should just get whatever. No. If I have to go to the restaurant and I have to pay a little bit more for my meal so that people can have a decent wage, I'm okay with that. Well, right now, in, through the last two years of the COVID thing going on, I know I know people that work in the food service industry, and the tips from people who appreciate them being there have been tremendous this last two years. Yeah, it's been amazing, and uh, you hear these stories of uh, getting a, a twelve hundred dollar or higher tip at a restaurant. Yeah, that's people. I guess they're paying forward for. More prosperity a little later on, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Packing it away early. But, wow. It's been real good for some. And then, I guess there's some people that they lost their jobs and then couldn't get back in to, to, to their industry or whatever it is they want to do. They have to take a, a job that's not as much fun. But we've all done that over the years to get to where we want to be. We've, we've done that's stuff true. that we didn't want to do. That's true. We had we did jobs that we hated doing, but uh, you just keep on pushing each and every day. You get out of that bed and just hit, hit that alarm clock, smash it if you have to. I've got one of those old wind up ones, you know, yeah. just to show the grandchildren. That's how we used to get up. Not this little beep 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 on a phone. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, I had one of those when I first went away to college. The wind up one. That Oh yeah. We'll wake up to dead when you know, when it goes off. And you're wondering how long is it going to take this thing to wind up? Man, you, you got to wind both of them up. You got to you got to wind up the the spring that uh, sets off the bell too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll tell you, but uh, we we've got some interesting days ahead. Oh yeah. Uh, are you going to get your uh, booster shot? My booster shot. You, well, I've been. I pay a cl close attention, less attention to politicians and news media. But when the Centers for Disease Control says something, you know, sometimes the media catches it. And uh, I heard a little buzzword in there in the last few days, and and they said, uh, well, this third uh, Pfizer shot, uh, 
for uh, people with uh, compromised immune systems, like HIV. How ma- when's the last time you heard about HIV? Haven't in a while. They got a, They got a. They have a cocktail that's pretty uh, helpful. Yeah, yeah, I, I've heard that. And uh, well, everybody knows somebody who knows somebody who's who's had HIV. And uh, the last few years, there's not been that much pressure on their minds about spreading HIV because somehow that cocktail can can I from what I understand I mean I'm not a medical even a medical type of a thinker you know but uh, when you're talking about the immune system it, it's it would it would attack that immune system but now I'm, I'm hearing that they are not as infectious to others so I I'm still not going to take any chances. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but still, it's out there. You're not hearing about it right now because, well, the COVID thing is fresh and new and still in the unknown area because, like you said, it tries to survive and it morphs and it changes. And it what does. was it? Dennis said it shape shifts. Yep. Shape shift. A good example, good, uh, uh, good analysis there. Wow. Well, you know, when you, we think about COVID, you think about. I mean, you think about it, talk about HIV, I think about Magic Johnson, and I saw yeah. today on Facebook, uh, he was, somebody was acknowledging it, today was his birthday, I think he turned 60. Wow. Uh, and they had a highlight reel of him playing. Man, you really forget how good he was. And he was six foot nine, he could move like the wind. Wow. <laughs> He was he was he was really special. I'll tell you that. That's for sure. Wow. I'll tell you that's. Uh, but in any event, so I hope that I was helpful to you in terms of helping you understand a little bit more about COVID and and how it affects you and uh, the design of the drug to try and keep you safe and hopefully you'll take advantage of it and next week take advantage of calling in on the show early in the show because we got about a minute and a half left. yeah and, and somebody uh, and whoever's calling now ring. yeah next week you got an yeah. appointment right here with us whoever's calling now call next week because it's too late to talk now because the show is just about over i'm gonna play that theme song and we're gonna be gone soon. yeah but hey what a show yeah. I, I love it when the audience participates and calls in though We've been getting some really good calls yeah. from well-behaved people for a change. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And and you know what? If 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 you want to t- expand your thought process about what I said about black Republicans, there's a book uh, called "What Color Is a Conservative" by J. C. Watts. Uh, Interesting. I, I would in, I would encourage you to pick that book up and read it. You can learn something. But anyway, I would like to thank you so much for tuning in to the African-American scene. God bless and be safe. And I will see you next week right here for the African-American scene. And if you can't get enough of Rudy Howard on the radio, check out YouTube. Look for WPSLTV.com. It'll take you to our YouTube where you'll find hundreds of of Rudy Howard's African American Scene archives. Online, WPSLTV.com, straight to our YouTube station. And also, one other thing we want you to always remember that this is WPSL, Port St. Lucie, the talk of the Treasure Coast. That talk thing is a communication thing, and we're breaking all barriers on this show. Talk of the Treasure Coast with the time right now is 7 o'clock.